Hi, uh, my name is Maria Voronsova, or BAT. Um, I am sad to not be in Madagascar with all of you. Um, and uh, I am sorry that uh, my health didn't make this trip possible. So uh, instead, I am recording this presentation. Um, I am very happy and proud uh, to have come to the end of this three-year project. Um, it has achieved some amazing things. Um, in my presentation today, I'm going to travel through some background um, of what it is exactly that myself and Kew Gardens have done in Madagascar um, to study grasses and grasslands. So I'm going to present a little bit of background to the project. So the first 10 years of Madagascar Grass Project um, established foundational sets of information about the grasses in Madagascar. And uh, after I describe that, I will briefly cover the work that we are doing at Q for grassland conservation and uh, for carbon um, to help with raising crops in Madagascar. And finally, this livestock project. So I began working in Madagascar in 2011, and um, my professional speciality is I'm a taxonomist who classifies plants. And the majority of the work I have done personally is trying to understand what are the correct names for the grasses of Madagascar, where are those grasses and how should we identify them? So on this slide here, you can see um, pictures of the many different publications that we have produced, um, which are taxonomic treatments and revisions of Poesi of Madagascar. And uh, in 2018, we published the identification guide to grasses and to bamboos of Madagascar. This book has pictures of all the genera of grasses and the current project has taken it one step further to prepare a book about every species. Um, at the same time as doing the taxonomy, I have had the immense pleasure and privilege to supervise and collaborate with many fantastic students in Madagascar to make checklists of all grasses from specific areas. Um, Nanja published a complete list of grasses from the Itremo protected area. Um, Nantanaina made a complete list of grasses from the Ishalo National Park. Um, and August from the University of Majunga listed all the grasses from the Majunga area. Together with my colleagues who are professional ecologists, um, we established what we call the Global Grassy Group. Um, and the Global Grassy Group has a special plot protocol to record species in grasslands and in open ecosystem types. And um, the reason we did this work is that traditionally, many people and projects study tropical ecology, through woody plant plots. And usually when people talk about doing plot work, 
these plots involve measuring only trees and woody plants. So this protocol that we also used in the current project um, is designed especially to understand the ground layer and all the small plants. And the, another advantage is that this protocol enables us to systematically compare Madagascar and mainland Africa, as well as other parts of the world. Um, Jan Hackel on the slide created DNA sequences of everything that our teams have collected over the years. And we constructed evolutionary trees of Madagascar's grasses. We discovered that grasses colonized Madagascar at least 71 times, and the majority of C4 grasses arrived in Madagascar during the global expansion of savannas. So around 5 million years ago, on many continents, the forest retreated and big grassland ecosystems opened up. And on Madagascar, these big new natural grassy ecosystems were home to C4 grasses. And um, C4 grasses, um, they need open sunlight to live. Most of them are not found in, under the forest canopy. This is a paper that we published in 2016, where I made a systematic comparison of the numbers of species and floristic diversity of the grasses of Madagascar. And uh, I compare them to grass species richness of all the different continents. Um, and we found that Madagascar's grassy flora seems to be natural because the diversity and endemicity is fairly normal for large islands and the grassy ecosystems seem similar to other natural grasslands and savannas in the world. Cedric Slufundranduatra um, used the plot method to complete a fantastic PhD uh, together with me and Caroline Lehman and Yari Janoda. Um, she compared grassy ecosystems maintained by grazing and maintained by fire. And she discovered that grasses look different in fire grasslands and in grazing grasslands. Um, and it seems that grazing grasslands have grasses that have ancient traits adapted to grazing and adapted to being palatable. And this led us to propose a theory that maybe before people arrived on Madagascar, ancient animals grazed grasslands before there were any zebu. Um, my other colleague, specializing in fire ecology, uh, called Leanne Phelps, uh, carried out a global analysis of fire to systematically compare Madagascar's fires to those in other places. And the paper that you see on this slide documents that actually Madagascar's fires are quite normal for tropical Africa. And Madagascar's fire regime at the moment seems more or less natural for the world's savanna ecosystems. Um, and when, um, when the global ecosystem typology was reviewing its top-down, highest level global classification, um, Caroline Lehman was part of the group, and we can see that Pyrek tussock savannas are formally accepted by the IUCN as a natural vegetation type in Madagascar.
Lian during the pandemic organized a big online meeting of many interdisciplinary scientists, all of whom were studying different questions about different canopy ecosystems. Um, and we exchanged many ideas at this workshop and prepared a research agenda for the future. Um, and soon uh, we will complete the publication of a paper recommending a more standardized terminology. So we discovered that the word woodland is quite confusing because the word woodland is applied to savanna and also it's applied to forest at the same time. So we have done some work to try to establish exactly what words everybody should use to understand each other better. Ludicia simplex is the most commonly occurring and dominant grass of the Malagasy Highlands um, and Chana Almari produced a fantastic MSc thesis um, together with George Tiley working on its genetic, morphological and ecological diversity. So as you can see on this slide, both in Africa and in Madagascar, this species is morphologically very variable. It occupies a variety of ecological niches and it has a variety of genotypes. And all aspects of Ludicia simplex evolution, morphology and population genetics fit perfectly with what we expect um, of dominant tussock perennial savanna grasses. And now I will speak about um, other projects that Q are carrying out on grasses and grasslands in Madagascar at the same time. Uh, we have now started working on the GCBC project, which is modeling grassy biomes to find better places to plant trees. We are collecting information on all plants growing in open canopy ecosystems. We are using the distribution of these species to make models of open canopy ecosystems. And once we have maps of these systems, we will try to understand which ones should be conserved for their biodiversity, which ones are necessary to use as pasture, and which ones are the good places to plant trees with a good chance that newly planted trees will survive and not be burned down. On this slide, there is another project that we are currently running um, on a Malagasy grass called Digitaria. Um, Nantanaina and Fenitra and other colleagues have been working on a long and complicated taxonomic revision and identification key to try to name these grasses in a way that is consistent with the international naming system so we can understand whether herbicides developed for African grasses are applicable to Malagasy species. Um, Fenitra completed an excellent MSc thesis to understand grass weeds occurring across the central highlands and she confirmed the great need to understand grass weeds and manage them better um, since the yield loss from these weeds was seen by the farmers as greater than their usefulness. This slide I presented in Tana in 2019 when we started the first scoping workshop for this project together with uh, Caroline Lehman and together with Wayne Truter. And we thought about how human life depends on grasses. Um, rice and maize are used for food and pasture forage is essential for zebu nutrition. And back in 2019, we spoke about 
all the knowledge that we have accumulated and how can the knowledge we have really contribute to grazing and zebu production, which is incredibly important for Madagascar because zebu production contributes to the wealth of the people. And if it's done in the right way, it can also contribute to biodiversity conservation. So it's a great pleasure for me to be recording this presentation five years later, um, when our three year project has come to an end. So you will be hearing about how the University of Pretoria have been helping us boost fodder flow to feed the zebu better. Um, myself and Q have contributed knowledge and understanding of nutritious native grass species. Caroline Yeeman at Edinburgh has helped us um, understand and manage fires. And Q Madagascar, as well as Missouri Madagascar, have hosted the projects in the vicinity of their forest conservation sites in Ankafo Bay, Ibiti, and the Tremor. Um, I hope that you have a fantastic and productive meeting today. Um, I am sad to not be there with you. Thank you very much. Goodbye.